Hello friends, great to see you again. This is Pastor Pete at Abundant Life Church, Lakewood, Washington. Today's the 15th of February, or Wednesday, 2023. And let me be the first to wish you a ha very happy day after Valentine's Day. I hope your Valentine's Day was wonderful. Perhaps even you started early and had a celebration over the weekend and it extended. And hopefully it continues on, that same feeling of love and gratitude, appreciation, uh, Romance for sure, but more than that. Um, so today, well, let's get our coffee. Got my coffee mug here and uh, get our Word of God open. And let's, uh, let's take a look at what God has to say about love. Not all of it. The Bible's filled with references to love. Maybe one little bit of it. So here we go. I'm going to read to you a, a passage of scriptures. About 10 or 11 verses from the book of Romans, the letter that Paul wrote to the church in Rome. And uh, the, the subtitle above it, you know, these are man-made subtitles. Paul didn't put this in, but the person who was categorizing and translating the, the words into English that we can understand has put the subtitle of Marks of a True Christian. So let me read this to you. It's uh, Romans 12, starting at verse 9. Romans 12, verse 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. And finally, verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So there's quite a bit to chew on there. I just want to zoom in a little bit on verses 9 and 10. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection outdo one another in showing honor. In, in verses 9 and 10, we get three different words that really mean love. It says love, but we also have different kinds of love being expressed. Maybe that's a better way to say it. Three different Greek words, and yet the word, we in English, we are limited somewhat because we use this word love kind of interchangeably in so many ways. The first one is in the very beginning, let love be genuine. It's agape. You've probably heard that. Uh, agape love, um, true affectionate love, uh, uh, love that, is, that inspires charity, love that uh, is not just an emotion, but it's a compassionate response, that there's, a, there's some action taken on behalf of another person, especially to their very best interests. Um, it's about benevolence, giving, because I have, I have something and you need it, I give it to you. Christ gave us this instruction over and over again, feed the poor, clothe the naked, visit the, the ones that are bound up. But we also see that the love of Christ itself is called agape love, in that he, how he loved us, and he saw our state of sinfulness, not being able to overcome that on ourselves, our own, he went to the cross. He bore that sin himself so that we could be set free from the punishment that we were due. Agape love. And it says that, let love, let agape love be genuine. Let it be for real, sincere, genuine, not, not made up and not given to be able to get something, but simple, true, affectionate charity, not out of sympathy, but compassion. In verse 10, we actually run into two different words uh, that are forms of love or different, different ways of thinking about love. It says in verse 10, love one another with a brotherly affection. And both the word love and affection are forms of love, if you will. So uh, uh, brotherly affection, at the end of verse 10, is Philadelphia. And you've probably heard that too, the city of brotherly love. 
That was what it was named for. And then there's Philadelphias in Greece that were named for the same thing. It really deals, that really is describing that Philadelphia, that brotherly affection, could be sisterly affection as well. It's talking about a kindness. It's talking about among those who are considered together. A, a Philadelphia kind of love, Christ would say, and it says here in the Word of God, that's saying our Christian brothers and sisters, our family of God, we should be kind to one another, be affectionate, be drawn to each other, enjoy each other's company. The other love, at the beginning of verse 10, it says, love one another with brotherly affection. That's philostorgis. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Philostorgis. It's t this is a form of love, a form of loving, a kind of loving, that really has to do with cherishing. It has to do with seeing such immense value in the other person. It's most often applied and used when thinking about our kin, our ki those that we are kindred with, especially with parents and children, husbands and wives, uh, siblings to each other, sometimes a close-knit family with cousins, certainly grandparents, etc. So this, this form of love that this Paul is saying to the church is saying, this sort of cherishing, this, this depth of seeing that there's more to it than I just enjoy your company. I'm glad we're neighbors. But there's a sense of uh, family connection to each other. Um, it really talks about having a kind of relationship that is built on affection and tenderness and kindness in our actions and in our words. And really he's getting at the heart of us, like in your, in, in your own heart, what is your intention towards each other? How will you be together toward each other? It reminds me of, um, of, of Galatians 5. If you want to click over there real quick, Galatians 5.22, it reminds me of the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit being that the Spirit of God is at work in us, and if He is at work and He's being successful, then we're going to bear fruit. We're going to show the results of the work of the Spirit in us. And so there's a list of what are the fruits of the Spirit. These, I think, could be uh, taken to show that this is what it looks like for us to cherish one another and to be so tender-hearted and kind and affectionate. Well, the fruit of the Spirit, says Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those who belong to Christ display that, the Word says. So, pretty amazing when you think of that, like this is the kind of love that Paul is saying, this is how you should live together, and you will, by doing this, you will show the marks of a true Christian. That you, you have agape, affectionate love, compassionate expression and working. You have philostrogus, that cherishing of one another, and that you have Philadelphia, a kindness and a welcoming and a, and a hospitality, welcoming each other in. And Paul is saying, look, what, considering what Christ has done for you and now you follow him and that you believe in him and you put your hope in him, then you should act like it. It should be clear and obvious to anyone who sees, especially your Christian brothers and sisters, that, that you believe in this and you're going to live it out the way that you, best way that you do it. And you're going to do it on purpose. And when you feel it the least, it even says in that passage in, in Romans, consider how you take care of your enemies. Consider how you respond to them, not in the same way they do to you, but with love, so that they could be blessed, so that they might ultimately be drawn to the God who could put that love inside of you. Friends, I pray that you'll be blessed today. Happy day after Valentine's Day. Maybe make it 10 days of Valentine's, right? Do, do some more loving things. And uh, I just pray that you'll understand and, and know God's Spirit at work in you and the fruit of the Spirit coming bubbling forth from you and that you will experience that and express it in Jesus' name. Amen.